Yep. I just, you have a microphone on a stick. Yes. All right, guys. I am <clears throat> losing my voice. I'm back. I know it's been a couple weeks since I posted anything, but I've been trying to figure out how to schedule a lot of these videos. Three of them are from the V-Twin Visionary Tour that I did back in the summer at Smoky Mountain Harley with the V-Twin Visionary guys. Jeff Holt, you saw the interview with him, a couple other guys. Well, Dave Rowe, one other guy. We had a blast and there's three interviews left. I've got uh, Blue Ribbon Cycles, Ford Cow Customs, and Rusty Bagger 24 all three from here in Tennessee. So I wanted to make sure that I did them all justice. It's gonna be a little bit longer video, but not too much, but I thought it'd be kind of cool to do a video with all three guys being in Tennessee, two of them being custom builders in a bike shop, and one of them being a fellow YouTuber, Rusty Bagger, Rush, Rush, Rusty Bagger 24. Sorry, Rusty. Check out all their links down below. If you're in Chattanooga, go check out Blue Ribbon Cycles. If you're in East Tennessee, check out 40 Cal Customs. A lot of his stuff is at Smoky Mountain Harley. And if you're on YouTube anywhere in the world, check out Rusty Bagger 24 below. That being said, here's the interviews. Uh, I may or may not pop in or out and say this is who's coming up next. So, uh, yeah. All right. So, it's hot, it's humid. We're still here at the V-Twin Visionary Tour. And you know who I am. You may or may not know who this guy is. He did a TV show too. His was, you did more than I did though. How many episodes did y'all do? No, I was only on one. I was wrong. He was only on one episode of a TV show. Same channel we won't discuss though. <laughs> We've got Matt here. He's with 40 Cal Customs. And you're out of Alcoa, Tennessee, right? Yep. I just, you have a microphone on a stick. Yes, I have a microphone. It's my shtick for this. <laughs> That's the exact reaction I want with every single person yeah. I interview here. That's the one you'll get. Well, it's like I didn't have my boom mic, and all I had was a lav mic, and I didn't want to do this, you know, and that was probably real loud to everybody, but I didn't want to, like, do this. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah that looks that. weird. Yeah, yeah but, uh, but okay. Yeah, at least I'm not holding it like this, you know, like a teacup or okay, something. Okay, right. Yeah, that would be weird. <laughs> <laughs> but fellow Tennessean, just like Blue Ribbon Cycles, who we've interviewed, which I don't know what order I'm gonna air these videos, so maybe it's a future video I'm talking about. You build bikes here in Alcoa. Well, yep. we're in Maryville, but in Alcoa. Yep. And you guys, it, go to his Instagram, all his social medias, 40 Cal Customs. Like, there's a lot of people, and I've told people this all day, there's a lot of people who are builders and they have a style. And it's like, you look and you're like, hey, that's, James or that's Billy Bob or that's Mr. Smith or whatever. I want to like sit inside your brain <laughs> and be like, where does all of this come from? Because you have every style. Like I've not seen, like I can't look at a bike and go, that's a 40 cal custom bike. But I look at your bikes and they're badass, but like there's not like this theme or anything. Yeah. Like, tell me like how you come up with all this. No, man, I, I really, I, I, I don't know. It's just whatever we're in the mood for at the time. Yeah. Most of the time, when we build a bike, it has some kind of purpose. Yeah. Sometimes it's a race bike to race like a specific sort of race. Um, or if it's a chopper, it's, you know, hey, we're going to go do this ride or this sort of style with this chopper, or this custom bike. So believe it or not, there, there's, there's some kind of purpose or thought yeah. process to it. But we don't really, like, uh, hold ourselves bound by any, like, well, man, we always do this this way or that way because, I don't know, they're all different and that's intentional. He's got two hooligan bikes out there, right? They're both the same purpose hooligan racing yeah. but they're two totally different styles yeah it's that kind of stuff that like <laughs> it, the thing that blows my mind about all these builders that i've interviewed we've seen here at the v-twin visionary tour is like i've said it many many times before the extent of the extent i can't even talk the extent of my language sucks too but the extent of my mechanical expertise is like i can change my oil and i put my own grips on that's it like but i love listening to y'all talk about it and i love seeing the stuff y'all do but the thing that fascinates me is like you get a motor and that motor was designed with physics in mind by an engineer for a certain frame certain transmission certain forks certain wheels but then y'all just keep tweaking it until it works with something else and that's that's like the amazing thing that like custom builders do like how does that come about is it just a constant 
you know, a little bit this way, a little bit this way. <laughs> a little, a little. <laughs> Some of us just kind of made up and, and on the fly. <laughs> so I think this will work, and then, well, that didn't work. So then you learn something yeah. new every time. But every time you build one, you you should be learning something every time. Like you get tired of hearing guys say, oh, well, I'm a master builder or whatever. Yeah. Well, that's dumb yeah. because that means they've mastered the craft. Yeah. They, you know, they, they know all there is to know right. about it. And I know like some people, I, I told this to a guy once and he, he got kind of offended. I was like, well, man, it's like fabrication or building bikes is like the same as like an attorney is always practicing law yeah. or a physician is always practicing medicine. If you're a fabricator, you should always be practicing fabrication. Yeah. Each project is just an exercise or a practice to get better each time yeah. or to learn something else. So that's how you see these bikes. Like the bikes that the guys are riding today, we went on a ride this morning and there was a lot of hot rod stuff, like really big horsepower bikes yeah. with a lot of technology, suspension, tires, engines, all this crazy stuff that done to these bikes that you know, five years ago, these bikes would have been, you know, out of mind. Like, no one right. would have thought about the bikes that, that we were just cruising on today because, you know, it wasn't there. Guys, everyone's pushing each other to do more and more. Like, oh, well, I did this, you know, and that's cool. But, man, this guy, look what he did, you yeah. know. So you just kind of feed off of it. And the more you're involved in it, the more you see other people's stuff, the the better you get. It's kind of like the infatuation I have with the hooligan races. It's It's something in an industry that makes people go, I could do that because, yeah. you know, you go to these little, you know, eighth mile tracks, people never get out of second, sometimes not even out of first. Yeah. And somebody who's, you know, a mid-level rider, they hadn't been riding, but for a few years, they see it and they're like, hey, I could do that. I could yeah. pull that off. Well, the more people you get going, hey, I could do that. The more people that are trying it, the more people that are trying it, the higher the level of competition gets. And then it gets better and better and better and becomes something huge. So similar to what you're saying. Yeah. And the other stuff with what you're saying about being an expert, it's like, when I used to hire in the job I had before this, the moment in the interview, somebody said, I'm a social media expert, I'm a marketing expert, or anything like that, I was done. Because you cannot be an expert in any of those fields because it's constantly changing, like all the time. And yeah. we, and like you said, when you're an expert at something, okay, just quit now. Yeah, that's it. What you else is there to do? Could do something Why are you else? still building bikes? I appreciate you coming on. I, I really want to thank you too because we connected on the TV show level because we were on the same network and then we had dinner up here and I wasn't able to get in here at first. But there was like 20 layers of gatekeepers and you're like, hey, you're gonna be here tomorrow. I was like, yeah, expect the phone call. But then I get a call from Tanya, she gets me in, now we're doing the V2Win Visionary Tour, we're sponsoring it, so yeah, I wanna thank you for that too because you're a big integral part in that. But definitely check it out. 40 Cal Customs on Instagram, uh-huh. Facebook, Yeah, yeah. The any other? Do you have like a that's, that's website thingy? There's a website, but it sucks. So okay. Sucky website, yeah, 40 Cal <laughs> Customs. Don't go there. Yeah. It won't be as good as the Instagram stuff. But yeah, check them out. You'll be, you can be racing more this year? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We got a couple, couple of flat track races coming up. And then uh, we're going to be drag racing here in about 45 minutes out back. Nice. All right, man. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you. Thanks. Every time I get up, that chain grabs it. Now we're going to go to Pete Woodward. He is Blue Ribbon Cycles. Uh, down in Chattanooga, Tennessee. We're still here at the V-Twin Visi- Vision- Visionary. Wow, Vision- that was good. That was really good. Visionary. V-Twin Visionary Tour at Smoky Mountain Harley-Davidson. We're in the shed. We're in the indoor venue for the shed. I'm here with Pete from Blue Ribbon Cycles. Uh, here is where you will go see him, like wherever I put the link right here. Or it'll be in the description too. So, you know. <laughs> he is a custom bike builder out of Chattanooga, Tennessee. Yes, sir. I'm not originally from Chattanooga, but I really fell in love with that place. Uh, uh, back in 2005 when I first moved there and it was just uh, I, I just love the people the culture and the, there's a big focus on uh, on locally uh, owned businesses so it just seemed like a natural fit for us how weird is it with me sticking a branch from a tree in your face as you talk it, it's nice it's, it's, it's a little awkward I mean I'm glad there's no thorns on that for anybody to get hurt and you know yeah you know, uh, good idea I need to go find a thorn tree where are you from originally I'm originally from Dubuque Iowa okay. um, after uh, going to MMI back in 2004, uh, I've lived in the southeast for, uh, for the rest of that time since, so for, for about 15 years. Um, I love the, uh, the extended riding season down here because yeah. Iowa, it, it is kind of shortened, so nice. it, uh, you know, better, better for business, especially in the, in the motorcycle biz, yeah. you know. 
And there's uh, here at the tour. There's like three or four. No, there's no. There's more than that. There's probably four or five FXRs with the touring pack, yeah. the, uh, the the fairing on the front. Yeah. And I like all of them. Don't get me wrong. But I kind of lean more towards yours with that. You know, the retro feel kind of look. And this is a video of it. Yeah. So uh, yeah, this is uh, my 1994 uh, FXLR lowrider. Um, this is one of those projects that kind of got out of control in a hurry. Uh, I had a lot of extra spare parts laying around, and they all kind of got thrown at this one. Um, a lot of it was trying to modernize the bike, but yet still keep the classic look. Uh, I wanted the updated suspension. I wanted the updated braking. And uh, even after I blew up that Evo motor in the stock uh, setup, I had a twin cam laying around and thought, hey, let's let's try uh, shoehorning this thing in there and seeing what, seeing what we can do. And... Uh, it made for a, for an all-around great performance bike. Uh, the handlebars we made in-house to, to my spec, to what I wanted uh, as far as uh, rider comfort and for the uh, aggressive riding style that I have. So, How'd you blow up the motor? <laughs> uh, well, uh, some might say uh, having a little too much fun. Uh, I tend to ride like a jerk sometimes, and, uh, and uh, in the process, parts get broken. So... Uh, Ride, ride wrench repeat you know yeah you know yeah. you know ride it like you want to rebuild it yeah, you know exactly. <laughs> uh, I figured if I blew the motor up it'd be a, a good excuse to the wife to, to why I need a new motor you know and that's the thing I learned about the motorcycle industry is like there's lots of things we can do to where we can go to our wives and be like hey you know the uh, motor blew up so I've got to I've got to rebuild it with this 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 and this and this and if they know a little bit about it like your wife actually does oh my gosh get over here with that Show the camera what you're working with. So he's back. <laughs> he's not saying better they say stuff. There you go. Hello, no? what are you doing? Oh wow, that's impressive. Uh, what was I saying? Yeah, so <laughs> that was distracting. Excuses as to why we come up with reasons to buy parts. Yeah, so. but but the thing that sucks with you though is your wife works with you in the shop and she knows bikes. It takes a little more explaining sometimes. Yeah. Uh, since since uh, Carrie and I work together, live together, I mean, granted she is passionate about bikes, so that helps out, but uh, when it comes to finances, uh, I have to come up with some pretty good excuses to, to why I need the product I need on my bike. So uh, she's been very supportive, though. I can't complain. She's She's been a good one to have by myself. That, and then she's going to want those extra parts. And uh, Oh, that's true. Know, I mean, hey. Then we get two. And I get them for my bike, and she gets them for her. Sometimes you just gotta buy something for their bike, and be like, well, since you have this, now I get. Yeah. You know, hey. Exactly. You know, exactly. Thing, you know? So if people want to find out more about you, Instagram is just Blue Ribbon Cycles. Yes, Blue Ribbon and Cycles, and, and uh, fa same on Facebook also. Okay. Website. Uh, we don't have a website, but uh, we're, we're at 5716 Lee Highway in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Okay. Uh, located near the airport, great location. Uh, been there for six years and still going strong. It's it's really easy to spot. It's a white building. They've got their logo on the side of it. It's an open parking lot to the right of it if you're facing the Lee, from Lee Highway. So it's, I mean, it's not hard to find. And they've got awesome bikes sitting outside when they're open. Always I, plenty of bikes, yeah. Yeah, I doubt when they're closed. Yeah, you're, what are you doing, like riding or something? I'm camped out inside working on secret stuff. Oh, okay. Ooh. <laughs> I'm going by on Sunday, <laughs> Monday. All right, appreciate it, man. All thank right, you. Thank you, Zeke. Yep. Next one is Rusty Bagger 24 He's a YouTube channel. He works there at Smoky Mountain Harley. Uh, we had a really good conversation, I hope, through editing it, because I don't edit this like before I do this part of the video. A lot of the conversation gets out because we talk about everything in this video, uh, even him being a YouTuber, which he's growing really fast. I'm really proud. It's pre pretty, pretty cool. Hope you enjoy it. So it's the final day of the B-Twin Visionary Tour here at Smoky Mountain Harley-Davidson. I'm exhausted. I'm sweaty. I'm starting to tear stuff down. Uh, we're going to have a brunch at 11 and then we're rolling out at 11.45 for a final ride. But I'm here with Rusty, also known as Rusty Bagger 24 on YouTube. Uh, he does moto vlogging. Uh, that's what you call it, right? Moto vlogging. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of sounds cheap. That's what it is. Yeah. I just like picture, you know, a guy on a cheap Kawasaki adventure bike. When I that's all the moto vlogging. Oh, yeah. just like he's got crappy sport bikes. So stuff. you just have the fairing of a Harley. It's actually a Kawasaki right. adventure bike. Right. Kind of okay. That's just, <laughs> hey, that's my first bike. <laughs> so he works here at Spooky Mountain Harley Davidson. First time I came. Uh, I had been following him for a while on Instagram, and there's a lot of gatekeepers here. It's a very well-run business, so you have to get through different layers to get to people, and he was one of the layers that got sent out to talk to me. We talked for, what, 45 minutes, maybe yeah. an hour? You gave me a tour of everything. It was really cool. And then I get back to the hotel, and I'm flipping through Instagram, and I see Rusty Badger. I'm like, I 
just met a guy named Rusty. So then I started flipping through trying to find a picture of him, and I'm like, oh wow, I've been following this guy forever, and I just hung out with him for like an hour. How long have you been doing your YouTube thing? Um, I started it in February of this year. Um, I did a couple videos, okay. and I don't know, just like time and other factors, I, I kind of stopped for a minute. Yeah. I kind of got discouraged because I've, I've always been one of those guys to where I want something now. Yeah. So I want thousands of subscribers now. I want thousands of followers now. And that's not going to happen, obviously. It's unrealistic, but I've always been that person. So I would upload these videos and I would kind of get discouraged. So I kind of stopped for a minute. And then I kind of got a fire lit under me again and started doing it. Quality over quantity. Like, don't even worry right. about your followers. Right. Just if, if you've got people that like legitimately follow you and follow you and they enjoy watching your videos, don't worry about that stuff. Don't worry about the numbers. Throw them at your head. Just make stuff that you think you would think is cool. Right. And you're you're one of the guys that like that taught me kind of lit a fire. It's like you and uh, traveling tall. Don't listen to what I said. <laughs> It may some, not work. Some of the things. Some of the things. <laughs> I've got fives of followers. Fives of followers. Fives of followers. Yeah, I got, I got like, tens. All, all, oh wow. <laughs> no, but I mean that's the biggest thing. Is like a lot of people get on YouTube and they they do this to for the fame. Yeah. They do it thinking there's a lot of money involved. There's not. Um, it's got to be something that you're passionate about that you want to do that you enjoy. If you don't have that passion, people aren't going to follow you. Right. And you want people to, it, I mean, really, it's a social media still. So it's, it's people that are like-minded that are getting into the same thing you did. I mean, like, I started this channel with pipe tobacco stuff. Mm -hmm. And because my grandfather smoked a tobacco pipe, I started seeing how collectible they were, historic ones. And there's a little community in the YouTube world on pipes and pipe tobacco. Right. And once I went into the uh, motorcycle industry, I was like, we try throwing some motorcycle stuff up there, and I've had a good response. I've lost a few followers for it, but I'm not too worried about it. If you're passionate about it, and it's a niche too, that's another thing. You build that community with this, but you've right. got to be you. You've got don't ever be a character. Right, right. Just just be you on the bike. Talk like you would be talking to your dad or me, your mom or whoever. Right. And and just grow it that way. But I mean, I'm I'm talking to them, and I'm I guess I'm promoting. I mean, five of followers is that really promoting? Hey, five count. If he gets five more followers off this, it's awesome. The reason I'm doing it is because he actually does good stuff. And when he talks on the bike, he's genuine. Even when he's like has a little script where you're talking about the 22, right. 2020s, he's not trying to hide it and act like he knows. You see him looking down, he's like, hang on, let me check this. Yeah. Uh, it's genuine, it's authentic, and that's important when it comes to the YouTube world. And you really enjoy it. And just Rusty Bagger 24, right? Yeah, Rusty Bagger 24 on Instagram, on, uh, on YouTube logo um sticker bombs my thing so yeah and if, if that bike was too loud i'll just have a little thing pop up that says rusty now you're going i said 22 my bad 24 24 what's yeah. the 24 mean that was my football number uh in high school and I just what position did you play uh receiver and then free safety i didn't play long but oh, i would have never got to meet you then i was defensive then <laughs> 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 all right, man. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, and absolutely. this is that. That's pretty much it. That's all we've got for the V Twin Visionary Tour. Everybody that came out, uh, that was here, thank you very much. It was awesome. Great event. Last night we sold out. So that's what twenty five hundred people. Did we sell? Yeah. Out? So it's twenty five hundred. Is wow. that what they maxed no, out? Uh, two thousands are max, but okay, with added people, so, stuff like that. Yeah. So maybe twenty nice. five hundred. So, so wow. good event. Keep an eye out for it next year. It's going to be here again. If you're ever in the Maryville area, come up to Smoky Mountain Harley Davidson. Like I've said in the other videos with other guys, it's an amazing place. Amazing people that work here. The owner is outstanding. Uh, the shed is such a cool music venue. And uh, that's it. Thanks, guys. Ride safe. Have fun. Enjoy your life. All right, guys. That's it. That is a wrap for the V-Twin Visionary Tour. Thank God I finally got all the videos posted. Okay, there was one more. I screwed up. Uh, Scott Maddox, the owner of Smoky Mountain Harley, I want to thank him so much for doing the interview, but the audio didn't work. And I knew it kind of screwed up in the beginning and I thought I had fixed it, but I, apparently I didn't. So, it, I mean, there's a clip of it. I know we did it, but I just want to thank Scott Maddox and Smoky Mountain Harley for everything they did at this V-Twin Visionary Tour. If you're in Maryville, Tennessee, please go check them out. They're an awesome company, awesome, 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 awesome people. Uh, but yeah, I kind of screwed up with that last video, but yeah, this is a wrap up. This is all the V-Twin Visionary videos finally done. 
on the tube of you, you tube. Mm. Thanks guys. Enjoy life, ride safe. Talk to you later.